The Empire's got a big update coming alongside the Thrones of Decay DLC, but what's changed, what's new? Let's have a look, starting with ya boy! So starting with the Emperor himself, Karl Franz, the first change we might notice is in his starting army that he now has Karaburg Greatswords instead of just regular Greatswords. As you can see from his faction and lord effects, he works more closely now with the other Empire factions. He can now walk all over their lands without being trespassing, he gets bonus allegiance points, he gets growth from allied factions, he replenishes in Empire territory even when not allied with the faction, and then has a bunch of buff to the Elector Count state troop units as well. Into the campaign itself, it starts pretty much the same as before. You're in the Reichland, you've got level 1 Altdorf, and you start a war with the Empire Successionists, who you have to take the rest of the region from. However, there is one big change here in that you now start with the settlement of Helmgard, the fort settlement that used to be held by the Successionists at the start of the campaign that could be an absolute nightmare to try and take because they might go in there with a full stack and then you've got to try and get them out in this 14 garrison settlement. It was a pain in the ass, so that's been fixed. You now just have the simple path of going through the region, getting your first province without the risk of frustration of an enemy army holding out at Helmgard. So you can just take your first province and then get on with dealing with the rest of the empire. So a very nice change there to start with. As for the tech tree, that's had some love as well. For the most part, it's very similar. Some stuff's been moved around, jumbled around, a few new bits and bobs. I'm not going to go through every change. There is this new section though, the Colleges of Magic. That's tying into Balthazar's rework, which we'll talk about in a second. But generally, it seems like there's nice improvements across the board. As for the Elector Count system, this remains mostly the same. You can still summon the Elector Counts once you've got control of everything. You still get the state troops when you control their respective regions as well. You still have fealty to worry about, making sure you get all the Empire factions on side so you can eventually confederate them. So this side of things is mostly the same. There is a nice new feature though in the Electoral Machinations with Emperor's Decrees. This is something to finally spend all your prestige on. This gives you a bunch of useful actions that you might need at any particular time. This one improving your recruitment, this one giving you a nice experience gain to an army, this one gives a population surplus point so that can speed a region along a little bit, this one allows you to remove a big amount of corruption from an area, conscription, this one's very nice because it completes one turn of recruitment so you could instantly build an army in the same turn, very good for emergency moments. Send aid, this is also very good, spawns a degrading army in the target empire faction region, can't be used on yourself but does increase target fealty on whoever you use it on so that's very nice to help out the other empire factions if they're struggling. Requisition, this one replenishes all the elector count state troops. So obviously good if you want to get more of those. Next, Cassus, Cassus, Belli, Belli, don't know. Allows you to safely declare war on any troublesome elector counts that you need to take over without getting diplomatic penalties with the other elector counts. So that's very nice. And a new way to confederate the elector counts with Unify. Once they hit that 10 fealty, you can confederate them with this so you don't have to wait around for them to offer it to you. But alas, it comes with the fealty penalty to other elector counts. So all of those are pretty damn useful to be honest, so those are a really nice addition to the electoral machinations, and you still have the diplomatic talks as well, which works pretty much the same. Big changes to Imperial Authority, which now is a scale of 0 to 100 rather than like 0 to 10-ish, and it's all tied into how much of the Empire is controlled by man and the Empire factions. So at the moment we sit in the middle, which is having positive effects, and if the Empire factions keep growing and control all the Empire land, this will go up into the positive effects. But if we start to lose more and more Empire land, it will of course go the other way and we'll get negative effects. And it really kind of reflects badly on you, Karl Franz, as the leader of the Empire, that you don't even have control over most of your lands. As an example, as we can see in this campaign, Festus has a fair bit of territory, the Von Karsteins, Dreyka, these are all regions not controlled by Empire factions and that is bad for you, even though it's not your fault that those territories got lost, you are the Emperor of Man, so it's your responsibility to get it all back and to get it all under Empire control. So yeah, this gives a better sense, I think, that you really are the leader of the Empire. As for prestige, it pretty much works the same as before, can be gained through fealty now, and of course can be spent on those new Electoral Machinations actions. And lastly, what about old Carl himself? Any changes to his skills? Well, yes, yes there has been. Best of the Empire now gives more Lord rank and recruitment rank to recruited units. Imperial Special Forces has now combined the Great Swords and Reichsguard buffs so that the Emperor's men can now be buffs to Elector State Troops. This one used to be the buff to Great Swords. Heroic Knightly Band is the same except it's taken the upkeep reduction to Cavalry from the Leader of Men skill. Majestic Enforcer used to give minus 10 army upkeep but now it gives control and growth. And the Emperor's Journey is the same, except it now has perfect vigor, which is always a very nice trait to have and should make Karl a bit stronger in battles. And Leader of Men now is another buff to Elector State Troops. 
So some very nice buffs to Carl's campaign, I think, and some nice new additions with the Electoral Machinations actions, the way Imperial Authority is all about how much of the Empire you control. And as I say, it really does give the good sense that you are the Emperor and the leader of all these Empire factions, and it's your job to unify the land. All right, on to everybody's favorite golden boy. Now on to old Belthazar Gelt, whose starting army has changed quite significantly. He's now lost a unit of swordsmen and crappy spearmen. He now has Empire Knights instead of Outriders and a Hellstorm rocket battery instead of a cannon and mortar. Now his new mechanics are all about the Colleges of Magic, which we'll get to because Belthazar now no longer starts down here in the Empire where he used to. He now starts over in Cathay, right in the south of it. So a nice new unique position for him. You start here in the sunny Cathay lands at war with the Burning Wind faction. So you need to take them on straight away because you don't start with a settlement. So you need that one quickly. You've got Xiaoming over to your northwest. And then over in the west, you might have Nurgle or maybe Helm and Gorst will come after you. But if Cathay doesn't appeal to you as Gelt, you do actually get the option at some point in the campaign. I'm going to blur it for spoilers sake to go back to the Empire instead of staying in Cathay. This actually gives you a really cool, unique opportunity with the Empire as well, because you basically now get to choose where your start position is. Because when you arrive back, you'll get 10 turns with a triumphant homecoming, which gives you minus 100% upkeep, more movement range, immunity to trespassing in other Empire lands and all the other stuff you see. So you can literally wander off wherever you like and go and take whatever part of the Empire you fancy. Do you want to get rid of Festus and control the Hockland area? Do you want to go after the Von Karsteins and take Sylvania and start controlling from there and pushing outwards? Do you want to maybe start where Belthazar Gelt normally starts, in the Solund area? So it's entirely up to you, and I personally really love that kind of freedom. But Belthazar basically now has his own campaign. He's no longer just using the car mechanics in a different position. He now has arcane essays, a currency he needs to get, all about him learning more about magic. These are gained through the usual means. And they tie into the big new mechanic, the Colleges of Magic. Now what this does for you is a few very cool things. Number one, you can recruit any wizard at pretty much any time, provided you got the essays, which is pretty cheap. So a small thing, but very nice to have. Once you do get yourself a wizard though, you will unlock the rest of their actions, which do all sorts of different things. For the fire wizard here, you'll unlock the ability to blow holes in walls in sieges. You can use the magma storm spell from the book of Cataclysm. You know, the one in the Realms of Chaos campaign, you get all those crazy spells. Well, Belthazar can now use all of those. Restoration, this one here, will instantly heal your army. So as an example, I'm besieging this settlement here. My army's pretty beaten up. I'm going to lose half of it if I auto-resolve, although I can get the victory. So what I'll do is come and use the restoration spell, which does cost a fair few essays. But now my army is entirely healed up and I can win this battle with a decisive victory, not losing any units. Pretty powerful stuff to all do in the same turn, right? Or how about with the law of light? I can get a barrier of light, giving a barrier to my entire army. That's right. It only lasts for two turns, however, so you do have to time the use of it, but still very powerful stuff. So there's all sorts of stuff you can do with the repeatable actions from the different laws of magic. And then you have single use actions as well. These are pretty expensive. A lot of them providing powerful items for your characters. So yeah, there's just a hell of a lot that you can do with these colleges of magic. And this is great for Belthazar. It really makes him feel like he's the master of magic that he should feel like. A really nice upgrade for Gelt, I think. The Empire also gained a new lore of magic to their generic wizards with the Gold Wizard bringing the lore of metal to the Empire outside of Balthazar Gelt. And these Gold Wizards are no joke as not only are they masters of magic, but they are master of horse, able to ride the horse standing up whilst balancing on their goddamn staff. What absolute chads. What about Gelty's skills then? Well, he's no longer got Golden Face Mask at the start of his skill line. He now has Tempered Aura, giving a 10% physical resistance and 15 armor to himself and those around him. And then he has Compounding Medicines, all about keeping your army healthy for the most part. New formulations used to buff all the handgunners and outriders and such, now buffs Hellstorm rocket batteries. So they're kind of a thing for Gelt now. Golden Face Mask used to be at the start, gives him 20 armor and immunity to psychology. He no longer has the Luminarch buffs he used to have, but now has Will of the Patriarch, buffing up wizard actions and such. And lastly, Lawmaster Law of Metal used to be on the very top line for him, but now it's on this main line. And that's pretty much it for Gelty. So he's got some extra toughness from those skills now, a bit more armor, the physical resistance, so that should help his survival. The mechanics making him, like I say, really just a master of magic now and having some cool new interesting start position options. So both very nice reworks to Karl Franz and Belthazar Gelt, I think. What do you think? Let me know down below. And if you're wondering about Marcus and Volkmar, they're pretty much the same, no campaign mechanic changes. There's a few small changes, like to their starting army, maybe some skill points and stuff, but mostly they're unchanged.
I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Thanks to all the patrons who support this channel. I'll see you in the future.